Edwards computer. Yay. Welcome to Advanced Toastmasters Online <laughs> for some online meeting tips. <laughs> Just uh, pay attention to the mute button and the stop video button. You can use those if you want to mute yourself. You click on that bottom at the or the microphone at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. You can stop the video if you want to, but we like to see your smiling faces. So just keep that on unless you leave your seat. If you'd like to chat with somebody during the meeting, you can click on the chat button that's down at the bottom of the screen. And you can chat directly to somebody or you can chat to everyone. However, do that in between speeches so it doesn't distract the speaker. And we are an advanced Toastmasters club. If you are interested in joining our club and you are watching this via recording, just go to ato.toastmost.org and you will see on the menu bar where it says, um, I think I'd start here maybe. <laughs> at least that's my arrow says start here, uh, where you can look at membership information and find out more about our club and what is required to be a member. We are a new, still new, pre-charter club and would love to have lots of new members and uh, we hope to see you. And at this time, I'm going to open our meeting up and uh, we're going to, I think, Trisha, you're going to be our grammarian for the day, is that correct? Why don't we just have you go ahead and start with the grammarians um, portion of the meeting. So please help me welcome Trisha Grow, our grammarian. Thank you. As the odd grammarian, it's my job to not only keep track of our ahs, ums, and other filler words, but to provide you with a word of the day. Our word of today is sonorous. It's a verb of a person's voice or other sound, imposingly deep and full. Vincent Price had a very sonorous voice. I will post this in the chat. Please attempt to use our word of the day. Thank you, Trisha. I'm going to attempt to be, um, also do the timing. So <laughs> as the Toastmaster of the day, I'm going to attempt to do the timing as well. And this is my, my clock. What I will do is post a uh, yellow folder when it's uh, in the middle, when you've got the yellow light. But for the table topics, we'll do one minute. And one minute and 30 seconds, you will see the yellow. At one minute, you'll see the green arrow, meaning go. And I will find something red to put up <laughs> at the two minute mark. And during our speeches, I think our speech, Rick, today your speech is five to seven minutes. Yes, so at five minutes, you'll get the green arrow means yay, keep going. Yellow, you're right in the middle. <laughs> and that red one, which, which will show up. <laughs> and we'll put that one. Oh, you'll just be. <laughs> Trisha will do that. <laughs> so with that, that's our that's what we'll do for timing. Aaron, would you like to help with the evaluation portion of the meeting? Or is there anything that you can help do today? And you are muted. So if you'd like I'm to not do anything, but just pick a rule. Could you repeat that again? Uh, I was saying that I can pick up any roles. Okay. I think it would be awesome if you could be our general evaluator slash evaluator for Rick's speech today. That's okay. Okay. And um, I have, we're gonna, I, I will leave the table topics, but we will do it a little bit differently today. So be prepared for a little Maverick mix up during the table topics. At this time, I am going to introduce our very first speaker of the day. Uh, our speaker today is Rick Weiner. 
And Rick's speech is a competent communication speech number eight, getting comfortable with visual aids. And today Rick is going to attempt to master sharing his screen to complete a competent communicator. He'll be talking about many facets of his life and sharing a PowerPoint presentation outlining special moments he cherishes. So please help me welcome Rick Weiner. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Getting comfortable with visual aids, I have to admit that I have never shared my screen on Zoom before. I've been using Zoom a lot professionally since being introduced to this with this club. And I'm a little nervous about it. So with that precursor, I would like to share my screen. And there it is. Can everybody see that okay? All right. I wanted to talk a little bit about my life, almost as an icebreaker, but something a little bit different. What is, to me, important? What I find to be the most important parts of life? I had a wonderful childhood. My parents were fantastic to me, they were very encouraging. My only complaint was I didn't spend enough time with them, if that can be considered a complaint. When I got out of high school, when I was graduating high school, I was asked, what do you wanna do? And I thought I'd love to be a music teacher because my life was evolved around music. My music teacher at the time said to me, well, how much would you like to earn? What are you looking at for income potential? Back then I said, I'd like to make 10,000 a year. I thought that would be reasonable money. Well, we're talking in the 1970, so it's a little while ago, to learn that that was something that they would laugh about. At that time, that was decent pay, but thinking of the future. When I graduated high school, I, joined, I went to Boston Conservatory of Music. Most people know of New England Conservatory. I'm sure you've heard of it. But Boston Conservatory is one of those small gems. It's a school at a little higher level than New England. The whole freshman class, I was part of the largest freshman class ever, it was 140 students out of thousands of applicants. I went there majoring in music ed with a clarinet concentrate. As you can see the picture of me holding my clarinet. To this day, I still play music professionally. During the summer, I usually play a series of concerts. And I finally attained the age that I am now a life member of the union. It's been a wonderful journey. I love music. I love playing. I love going to concerts. To me, that is my first love and will always be a love of mine. After, why am I not progressing to the next slide? There we go. Afterwards in life, we get involved in making a living. We do all kinds of things. But getting to my age now, I found that I need to develop some hobbies. Serving as district director in Toastmasters, I was spending 40, 50 hours a week in the district. When I finished that term, I decided I need to fill that time with something. If you remember, I gave a speech a while back about my flock. People thought I was talking about something different, and when I introduced it as my chickens and my ducks, it brought a little bit of laughter in there. I thought I'd reintroduce my girls. The lower left-hand picture are the, you know, the girls munching on some tower garden lettuce. This is lettuce that Lori grows in the house. The one in the middle is an older picture of my, my chickens only. And then in the upper right are my ducks enjoying their pool. On the lower left, lower right is my um, coop, which I just bought the new coop. And that is a nice home. They're, they're quite comfortable in there. This hobby has been so enjoyable. It's been healthy for me, and it's helped me lose a little weight. It's helped me control my diabetes by a lot more physical activity. It's been a great thing to do. Going into my professional life, most of the pictures here you can see are pictures of weddings that I officiate, people I work with, but the 
more important picture is the one on the lower left. It's myself. I mentioned that earlier when we were talking about Rome, that one of my closest friends happens to be a Monsignor. Well, that's Father Alex. He and I have a ministry together. We do a lot of interfaith work together, and we've become extremely close friends. And that's Mazel in my arms. He loves to be with us as well. The weddings themselves take on all different types of flavors. There's the beautiful indoor wedding, which was at a very fancy venue. Outdoors, we do weddings at beaches. In fact, I see I did two pictures, one, two of the pictures of the same thing. Sorry about that. That's one mistake I made in my PowerPoint. Being a rabbi in the community has given me the opportunity to speak at many different civic events. I've spoken at Veterans Day, traveling from Veterans Day Memorial, to Veterans Memorials to Veterans Memorials, giving a little speech at each one. One of the things about Framingham, there was a large number of people in Framingham that were in the, the jets that hit the Twin Towers. We have a company in the town called TJX, that's TJ Maxx, Marshalls, that's the, the uh, corporate headquarters. There were quite a few people from TJX that were on the planes that died. So the community has an annual 9-11 memorial for that. I was asked to speak at that memorial at one, one couple times. It's been quite an honor to be able to represent the community the clergy at that. And I can see I need to go a little bit quicker. Going with Toastmasters. What a blast I have had through Toastmasters, getting up in front of the whole district, giving presentations, but the picture on the right, I was at the business meeting, presiding the business meeting, and while I'm there, I saw people coming with their cameras close up, taking pictures. I'm going, why are they taking a picture of the skirt of the table and not me? I couldn't understand what was going on. Well, as you can see, Mazel, notice our hands. He's mimicking me. We both are there. They thought that was the greatest thing. It's adorable. I love this picture. And that's where we are together. Toastmasters, as I said, has been a tremendous part of my life. You can see this is at our district conference. On the lower right-hand picture is John Lau. His year as president, international president. He came to visit us. In my year as district director, was a year of turmoil. The year before, there were all kinds of problems that happened. We had to bring harmony back to the district. And when I was asked by International, what can they do to support us? I said, give me representation from International. Mohammed Murad flew all the way from Saudi to, to be with us. And there he is, he was a guest in my home. It was a wonderful experience. Will we have a little bit more time? Is it all right, Madam Toastmaster, for me to continue on? All right. One of the pictures that I am very, very proud of from International was Khalid uh, Mentegatu. The year that he ran for International Director, I was a voting delegate. I interviewed him. I thought he was the right person for the role, and I voted for him. And when he won at the President's Banquet, I went to walk over to him to shake hands and it just organically happened into this hug. Somebody in the background took the picture, unbeknownst to us. This picture had actually gone viral within Toastmasters, and it's been something that to me has a lot of deep meaning as to two brothers from opposite sides of the world. And when I say opposite sides of the world, I'm not necessarily talking about geography. We're actually there hugging each other. He and I have become friends and keep in touch to this day. Now what's important in life? Family. The left-hand picture, the person on the far left is my dad. He passed away in 94. He's somebody I miss every single day of my life. Next to him is my mom we lost a few years ago. Also, as I said, I've been blessed with wonderful parents. The guy in the middle with the beard, that's me. With my youngest, with my oldest daughter, we were at a bat mitzvah in Canada, and those are my cousin's children there. The picture on the right is in my home here. It's a Passover Seder. My mother, my brother, 
Lori's daughter with her boyfriend and myself, of course. Lori's the one taking the picture, so she's not in the picture. I'll finish off with looking at what is important in life, as I said. The left hand upper picture, Lori and I took a picture of ourselves with Toastmasters Magazine to submit. And we never submitted it, but that's in Sedona, Arizona. There's down right below that is my two daughters, are my two daughters. Then the, next to that, my middle daughter with her family. The one above that is my son from Ireland with his wife and daughter. Then the one next to that is Lori with her son's two children. And then the next one is her son and then her daughter hugging me. And below that are my grandchildren in my arms, loving them. And then the one in the upper right-hand corner is our newest grandson. And he is the most adorable thing. I'm sorry. He's got to be the most adorable child I've ever seen. That's Kai. Kai Avi is his name. And there he is waiting for his cup of coffee. When we look at what's important in life, we look at what have we chosen for our career. We look at what do we do for hobbies. We look at all these different facets of our lives. But when it comes right down, push comes to shove, this last slide, to me, is the most important part of life, is family. This is what ties it all together. And this is what makes life worth going from day one to day two. Madam Toastmaster. Oh, lastly, gifts. I have been gifted to have a wonderful, supportive wife who has helped me get to where I am today. Madam Toastmaster. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rick, for that wonderful presentation and sharing your PowerPoint presentation and letting us be the first to see you do it. <laughs> One of the things I love about Toastmasters, we get to practice and uh, we will do that evaluation of that speech a little bit later. Uh, at this time, we're going to roll into table topics. And like I said, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. Since we didn't really have a Table Topics, uh, someone signed up for Table Topics, I thought it would be awesome if we each come up with one question that we would like to share and we'll say um, topic, 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 topic would be life's gifts since that was the last slide of Rick's uh, PowerPoint presentation. I think that was, might be appropriate. So just kind of think of like life's gifts as a general topic and we'll have everyone ask a question and then whoever wants to answer that question will just raise our hand. Does that sound like a good idea for everyone? Thumbs up. Who would like to go first in asking a random question about life's gifts for the audience. Trisha. My question is, life has handed you something very difficult at some point in your life, but it actually turned out to be a wonderful gift. What was this for you? So would somebody like to answer that one or will I be the one to answer? <laughs> okay, I'll answer it. Since somebody's pointing at their screen, I'm assuming that's me. Okay, um, I rarely ever talk about this. I may have to go back and edit this out of the video because it's not necessarily my story to share. Um, we'll just say one of my, one of my daughters had some really difficult times uh, as a senior and didn't see it coming. I thought everything was nice and perfect and life was going great for her and there was no, no emotional problems at all until it became a problem. And I don't even know that I remember the details of the story to share it where it would do it justice. 
I can only tell you that it handed me something very challenging that I had never had to go through before, uh, which was the possibility of suicide. And what do you do? Coming up with questions like, do I take this seriously? Um, is that, because it wasn't, it didn't happen, but it was in the conversation. And um, w deciding what to do at that point and realizing that I was not a professional and having to take her to, uh, you know, driving her to a hospital. So somebody else could make those decisions and not me and feeling that I did the thing that I needed to do as opposed to doing the thing that, you know, trying to fix it or gloss over it or pretend I know what she's thinking about or pretend I know what her motivations are. Um, I'm not timing myself. I realize what's going on. And uh, so in the end, it became a huge gift because the things that turned around for her in that process have been life giving, not life taking. And she learned a ton about herself. She learned how to process her emotions in a completely different way, as opposed to pretending that she didn't have any. And then when they explode, you know, not knowing how to deal with them. So that was something that life handed me. And it turned out to be a great gift because before that moment, I think our relationship wasn't what it could have been or what I wished a relationship with my daughter was. And after that, it's just gotten better and better and better and better. And it just keeps getting better. Maturity is a part of it, but I also think that that was a huge part of it. So thank you very much, Trisha, <laughs> for asking that question, <laughs> both of, and for everyone for being a participant in letting me try that story on for the first time four years ago. <laughs> So, huh, okay. So who would like to ask a question next? <laughs> Is anyone ready? Rick, it's I can here. ask a question. When we think of life's gifts, we, it's such a wide variety of, of topics that could be involved. S often it happens that something changes within our lives and we often think of it as a negative at the moment but then it turns out to be a tremendous gift and we realize that after the fact what name something in your life that started off as a question but turned out to be something very very positive within your life and if i may rather than ask for volunteers aaron would you like to answer this question I'm actually thinking for the first time in my life for table topic. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat that question again, just to buy some time. <laughs> well, okay, now I know you weren't listening to me. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I was but, listening. It's okay, I'm teasing you. We look at occasions in our lives where we have change to deal with. We often look at it as we often look at it as a negative, but then later on find out it's a positive, it's a gift. Tell us a time when something happened within your life that was a gift in disguise. Uh, this, this is better first. Okay. <laughs> now I get a better, better picture. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, you know that there are people around you that may have loved you, but you never realized. People who are just there supporting you. And every one of us is actually connected by different individuals in our lives that brought us today here. Rick, inspired by his lovely wife. Trisha, inspired by motivation from her family to overcome her cancer. Dawn, inspired by her daughter to keep on living and pushing on forward. Recently, there is something happening in my family. My grandma just passed away. I always hate my mom. Just letting you know that a bit of history between me and my mom is that originally me and my mom were in a very good relationship until the very day that I felt I was bullied and my mom didn't stick up for me or even stand up for me. 
to that day on, from that day on, I lost all contact with my mom. Or basically, I just ignore wherever it should go. And that was really just touching our hearts in a way that moms are the best gifts in life. Or usually speaking, I didn't notice that. I thought she was a burden. And she is the real reason why I lost my girlfriend three years ago. Because I came back and I've given up everything. But after my grandma just passed away recently, something happened to her. Just a few days ago, she was admitted into hospital because of a stroke. And that comes to make me realize that all the hatred, all the frustrations that I had for her simply disappeared. And I thought, why? I thought this person that I was looking up to before felt guilty and felt sad because she didn't stick up for me in the end. I should have hated her. But now looking at her at the hospital, my heart is only filling with love to care for her every single day. I just do not want to lose another someone that I loved deep in my heart that I don't admit. And with that simple reason, it makes me realize that my communication with my mom start to regain its pace, start to talk again. Conversations were made. Laughter is for me, and love starts to begin again. So ladies and gentlemen, this is truly a blessing in disguise. And hatred that you thought you hate actually turns out to be deep love. Back to you. So I was writing down your time, so <laughs> thank you for being patient. And at this time, Aaron, since you, you might want to take a deep breath, would you like to ask a question um, of the audience? Okay. Um, life is a box of chocolates. You never know what is in there. There are big gifts, there are small gifts. Sometimes the biggest gifts are the ones you see, but you may not get it. But the smallest gift, though, in many true size is reachable and be precious to us. So my question to the audience is, is there a big item that you really wish to cherish as a life gift, but you cannot reach it? Or this is actually a two two way question, you can pick any one of them. Or is there a tiny, tiny gift that represents your history, your life within this gift? Whenever you look at this gift, you always remember something happened in your life that makes you truly value. The only person that's not answering this question or rather say have an answer will be Trisha, right? <laughs> so I have to throw the ball to Trisha. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was very nervous. I was like, does this mean Aaron can ask me anything? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, I think I was a small gift. Um, I've been collecting unicorns since I was a very young girl, eight or so. And I have an entire room filled with small gifts that happen to take the shape of a form of a unicorn. They're all shapes and sizes, all different materials from glass to porcelain, stone, and even photographs poster. Each one of these gifts was given to me by someone I love, whether it was a dear friend, family member, or of course, my husband. Every time I go into this room, I see not only a display of the unicorns, which I love, but how also just flashes of memories of the people who gave me these small gifts as a token of their love, friendship, or caring. I love walking into this room and seeing all my unicorns because it helps me remember the love from my friends. You. Thank you, Trisha. 
Thank you everyone for participating in the community table topics <laughs> and letting me switch it up a little bit so the, we could share the joy. And at this time, I'd like to ask Aaron, our general evaluator, to begin the evaluation portion of the meeting. And so please help me welcome Aaron Long. Thank you very much, though. My role as a general evaluator is to evaluate people who have not been evaluated and lead the facilitators and evaluation session. So first off, I would like to welcome the other Aaron, or the other Aaron, to be evaluating Rick's speech in CCA. So give a round of applause to Aaron again. Yay. Hi. Are you there? Okay. I I'm there. So I'll shake hands with myself. So I'm really honored to be evaluating Riggs on his CCX speech. And I did a PPT just in case, really giving the flavor of how his presentation worked in a different manner. So first off is this. I actually take some screenshots and hopefully that will help you, Rick to really understand more about his life path. And really, hopefully, in the short presentation of our evaluation, that will compile everything that he needs to do. So Rick is a very professional speaker. He gives the vibe of really sharing with photos. Obviously, the objective is using the key point. Remember the key point. Two or more visual aids. So let's look at Rick's visual aids first. His visual aids is very simple. It's simply his picture, a nice background, and letting us know about his life. He's separate into different life stories. And with a nice clear high resolution picture, that is very clear cut and I can see his life just from a glance. And I can feel that he shares his emotions within his life. So around one to two minutes, he spent his time talking about his life. Then there comes the interesting part, the chickens. And this chickens is actually whereby I feel the vibe of, okay, this is something very personal or something that really brings the joy of what makes Rick so happy. And I see those lovely chickens. I saw it's really nicely decorated, performed with a challenge for Rick at this, at this slide. You notice that the pictures are disproportionate. I would love to challenge Rick in terms of presenting the PPT, make the size proportionate and maybe in standardized format. If you make the pictures like this, at the side note, if you look at, uh, I will draw a line, you can see that this picture actually stands out from the other pictures because it's actually on the top right hand corner and the contrast of the lines here are, are slightly obvious. So I would really hope that because it's, it's just for the visual effects of the audience, they will feel much more comfortable if standardized. So first challenge for Rick will be on standardization of visual aids. Very clear pictures, I love how it shows. And next we goes to his Toastmaster moment. And look at the lovely pictures. This is a full nice contrast. This is an excellent demonstration of how a PPT can be maximized. He focused very clearly on his confidence, which you can see from his presentation. And you also can see his smile. So this is actually showing him that he's really enjoying it. And I feel his true story in there. Offensity is what connects with people and that Visual aid actually stands it out. Next, I see that there are different stories within it. The second challenge for Rick that I noticed along the side, around like four minutes or so, is that he focused on three to four stories. So meaning that it's actually over slightly over time, just like my evaluation. So meaning that the first challenge, uh, the second challenge for Rick is to keep it short and sweet. If you want to talk about four stories, you just focus on two and elaborate on depending on the time. Focus on two key things that you want to talk about because four is definitely over time. And I love this pictures moments, family matters, really good. Now, challenge number three for Rick, I, I hope I summarize everything within the next 30 seconds, is that you see that there are lots of people in this picture. You spend time to tell about us who are there in person. So why not let us see and save the troubles by putting the picture with a name, uncle, grandson, and actually show us, oh, oh, they are those characters. Instead of spending time to say on the top left-hand corner, on the top right-hand corner, there are different corners. So it will be slightly confusing if we heard. 
And the second visual aids I would love to see is actually Rick himself. And this is him. There. This is his presentation, Visual 8.2. And for people who do not know how to use Zoom, there is actually a short full screen gallery view that you can zoom into Rick while he's presenting. So I'm looking at his presentation. Is the spotlight distracting from him or lifted from him? I see really great um, examples of him using great body gestures. And that's excellent. Final tip for Rick. You notice at the bottom right hand corner, your email and notification pops up. Uh, this is something whereby it's highly recommend to prevent or close any programs of notifications while presenting. Otherwise, people will see your privacy and that will be slightly unprofessional. But I see something in you. That something is obviously clear presentation. So that rests up on my evaluation. I know I'm severely over time. I'll pass the stage uh, to the round robin session to throw to Don. To evaluate. I, you are slightly over time, but I, it's okay because I stopped your timer at 2.04 for whatever reason. So <laughs> miraculously, you are, <laughs> you're good with your time. <laughs> oh, I don't know why that was, but yeah, it's funny. So Rick, I enjoyed your presentation. I felt it was very organized. I always enjoy when I get to learn a little bit something personal about anyone who's presenting. And I feel like I learned something about you that I don't know that I knew before. I didn't know that you had diabetes. I don't, maybe you said that before, but I don't know. But it also gives me something more to like, oh, you know, more depth, more multidimensionalness. And I think you're very multidimensional already, but it did give me uh, that. I also really appreciated that you shared that picture of um, you and your friend from Saudi Arabia? Is that what? No. Yes. Dubai, actually. Dubai. Okay. Um, that picture, because of who I am and the connection I have with that, brought tears to my eyes. Also, your Seder dinner, same thing. Who I am and what it means to me, tears in my eyes. So those little connections, those little things might not need, mean something to somebody else, but to the right person, it can evoke just a tremendous wave of emotion. So I appreciate how you did that without even thinking. So back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much, though. I would love to hear Trisha's comment as well. Yes, Rick, uh, I thought it was an excellent speech. I wanted to commend you when you ran your PowerPoint that you had it full screen. So that was very good. and. I thought that the, the photos were very appropriately, like Aaron said, with the one with the chickens, with the one in the upper right-hand corner, uh, was a little odd. Uh, and, and for some reason, because the ducks are so much darker than the chickens, that it just really grabbed our atten my attention, specifically, I just was really drawn to those ducks for some reason. Um, uh, I had a really weird question that has nothing to do with <laughs> your speech, per se. Is that all your ducks and chicken live in that little coop? Oh, yep. <laughs> okay. Um, Cohabitate, oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of birds. It's just <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was very well presented. And uh, even though you were doing PowerPoint on the side. I can see you were doing your facial expressions. Like Aaron said, you were using body language. And even though we can't see it, it still sort of imparts to your presentation. So I really appreciated that you still did that. And it was very lively. I got to know a little bit about more about you. And uh, I thought it was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Give round applause. And I'll pass the stage to the other Aaron. Hey, <laughs> come by. I'll just shake my hands for a bit. Thank you very much for uh, for evaluation, Aaron. Uh, really challenging you to keep yourself on time. Okay, I always hate that about you, and you should be really evaluating on time. Okay, key point. Next, I would like to bring in our facilitators up the stage. Our facilitator number one will be our timer. Our timer has been patiently awaiting at the sidelines to be 
giving our time slots. So let's welcome Dawn. Thank you very much, Aaron. And uh, for our speaker today, I was very happy to give extra time to Rick, uh, where your speech came in at 11 minutes and 15 seconds. So it was good and happy that our meeting allowed for that. Uh, table topics, Aaron and Rick, I wrote you both down as two minutes and 50 seconds. Trisha, yours was, ah, my notes are all over the place. I think it was one minute and uh, I lost the page, but it was not over two minutes. <laughs> And mine, I didn't time, I am sure mine was well over the three minutes because I could feel the time just going on and on. So back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much for our applause. Next, I would like to bring out our grammarian, which is Trisha. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I'm at fault. No one used our word of the day, bonerous. That's okay. For our rest of our ah grammarian report, Rick, you had only one so that I caught, and I enjoyed your turn of phrase where you were comparing, forget what you were comparing, but you were comparing something to small gems. Really just like that turn of phrase. Don, um, I was your <laughs> crutch word today. Uh, you had one um, one a uh, couple so's, and one you know. Aaron, I only caught two so's, and I didn't, I mean, I know I said at least <laughs> a few so's, but I, I didn't count for myself. That's my report. Back to you. Thank you very much for, uh, I love how Trisha is having a very lively voice, lively voice while I have a snorous voice. Hopefully that will be the word of the day. <laughs> Next, so uh, evalu general evaluation for the whole meeting. Well, I will say that everyone is a Toastmaster with many hats, but I don't have a hat. But really a great job for everyone to make sure that this meeting still goes along, even with four people. It just shows that Toastmasters can be brought to life with passion and action. So this is definitely something to start out with. Small, the smaller the numbers, it doesn't matter. As long as we want to make the meeting grow and happen, things will happen. So this is giving our applause for every single one to take the those. And even Rick as well. <laughs> uh, I love the uh, energy that Dawn gives. She's not discouraged. Usually if I'm her at this stage, I'll be super discouraged because Oh, there are only a few people. And she is very showing an example of how positive she can be. If she, she is going to be the person who's down, this meeting would not be well connected. So give her a round of applause for our president. <laughs> meeting starts uh, on time, and basically the Zoom, although it's actually off the cuff, still okay. I love that even though we four are always professional and knowledgeable on Zoom, you still do that Zoom video, which is showing the consistency there, which is good. Uh, I love the part whereby um, every every role taker is uh, voluntarily stepped up. So Timer, Don did a really good job on the timings. The only challenge for Don is that uh, if you are going to do the table topic speech because you issued a challenge, you might have anticipated there's a potential issue, which is that you cannot time yourself. So you would have to find someone else like Trisha beforehand, like typing a private message and say, Trisha could you time me when I was speaking so that everything will be keeping track. Um, other than that, good job, good job for our timer. Grammarian, Grammarian, Trisha, Season Toastmasters, Snorris was typed there and also explained with how to use the sentence. Challenge for Trisha would be that the reason why it's not used is because it's not highlighted or repeated. So how do we actually recall people or incur people to try to use the word of the day? Use a piece of paper, hold on to the screen as every time the person speaks, hold on the piece of paper, write the word snorris, big wordings. And then when you show it up, people will be much more inclined to actually speak up. So 
So that will be the challenge for Trisha, but great job. Evaluator Aaron, um, as I mentioned earlier on, Aaron, you should be on time, okay? So be on time. Yeah, I'm talking to myself, but it's okay. And also most importantly about, yeah, like that. Uh, this can be a very nice sample of highlighting, repeating the word. Now, also challenge for grammarian is that, uh, just before I forget, is also list out the good phrases used. Grammarian is also improper use, but also good use of wordings that is helpful and uh, beautiful whereby people can use later on. Now, overall, the meeting now is, what time? Now it's at 1.45, we're actually on time. For me, it's 1.45. To you guys, it should be around 8.45. So on time with four people, very nice consistent there. Uh, one final tip or challenge for the whole club is that Sometimes for round robin for five minutes, I don't think it's sufficient. Although I, I've been here for a long, lots of times. I would love to recommend that if we do not have too much time on round robins and we have to keep it at five minutes tops, ask the remaining people who have not evaluated that person in the round robin to write the comments in the chat box. That way it saves time, it keeps it constant, and everyone can put the input. We have to maximize, maximize the time used to make sure that every single minute is worth the audience time. So that's my evaluation for today. And great job. Pass back to the stage to our president. Thank you, Aaron. And I know Tricia is getting ready to leave. Oh, wow. That's an advanced way to use the grammarian's uh, word of the day. If you want to check out Tricia's name on her, <laughs> on her screen. So advanced. Um, have fun on your vacation, Trisha, and we will see you in a couple weeks from now. I know you said you had to check out of here early so you can get moving. So we appreciate you and thank you so much for everything. Um, Aaron, I, I wanted to add a little bit of an evaluation before I go completely into the next stage of our meeting. Uh, I really enjoyed the fact that you took screenshots <laughs> of Rick's presentation and created a PowerPoint presentation on the spot that was a very valuable uh, and surprise. Like you always surprise me by sharing something and it really looks like you're just sitting there on the couch kind of like just enjoying yourself and then all of a sudden we've got this big PowerPoint presentation of the evaluation of Rick's speech and it was accurate and it was nice and it was great and you gave even gave us a little tip on how not sure if everybody heard it but on how you can actually see the speaker's face instead of just seeing the powerpoint presentation if you want to there's actually an option within the thing so i enjoy the fact that you're always teaching you're always demonstrating something new and you always seemed to surprise me with something uh, that was yeah, that I just didn't expect. So that was great. I think that took the, our evaluations to a completely another level, like mind blowing <laughs> instantaneous PowerPoint presentation and evaluation. So thanks so much for doing that and showing up and being a super supporter of our advanced Toastmasters online. Our meeting today would not have been quite as complete without you. So I really do appreciate that. And at this time, I think I'm going to stop the recording.